Okay. So, so the title of uh, today's session is really about pre-cloud, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Cassandra to multi-cloud Cassandra, and I'll I'll talk about the evolution. Um, and the reason why I talked about the in-person events was because uh, basically this is something that has evolved. You know, something that's you know I kind of built the demo and I'm kind of improving the demo as we uh, go along, right? Um, so initially, I set it up uh, for multi-cluster. As you, as you all know, you know one of the biggest challenges in in Kubernetes today is uh, being able to do multi-cluster. It's not easy to do that, right? Uh, you know, it, a little bit of it depends on the application that you're building. Uh, you know, it depends on on the platform that you build on top of Kubernetes and all that. Uh, but but uh, um, you know, you'll see uh, how actually. Cassandra and Kubernetes uh, come together and the cloud come together, um, you know, in kind of a remarkably cohesive manner. Uh, and that's kind of what I'll show in the demo. Um, what I'll do is, you know, kind of uh, similar to what, uh, you know, many of the cloud operators do, you know, they have a control plane and then you, you know, deploy your, um, um, you know, your uh, data or your data plane, of, you know, you control your data plane via the control plane. Um, so, like uh, likewise, I have AKS, you know, as the control plane, and then I have the other two clouds, which is EKS and GKE, as the data planes. So, which is very cool uh, to be able to do that. And and you know, it's it's a pretty opinionated implementation, but uh, it works nevertheless. So, the agenda for today is basically I'm going to do a quick intro. Um, you know, talk about NoSQL for those of you who have never heard of NoSQL. Uh, I'm sure you have, but uh, but you know, uh, I think I think it has a lot to do with the cloud as well. It's really about horizontal scaling, um, you know, and uh, being able to provide the durability, resilience that you know are typical cloud properties. So you know, there was the cloud before there was the cloud. That's kind of how I put Cassandra. Um, then Kate Sandra, or sometimes called Cat Sandra, um, you know, it's uh, Kubernetes. Um, version of Cassandra or Cassandra on top of Kubernetes. Um, now, again, um, the biggest challenge that we face today, at least in the Kubernetes world, is the multi-cluster and multi-cloud and multi-region and multi-everything, right? Uh, and actually, we have introduced a new operator called Kate Sandra operator. Uh, earlier, we had something called as a CAS operator, and I'm going to briefly touch upon all of those. Uh, but what the Kate Sandra operator does is kind of sits on top of CAS operator and what it does is it deploys to multiple clouds um, or multiple regions or multiple uh, clusters and so on, okay? Uh, finally, I'll do a demo. And um, like I said, you know, it's an evolving demo. I started it at, uh, at uh, KubeCon NA, Los Angeles last year, uh, where I did a demo on GKE. Then I had to take the same thing and do it in AWS reInvent. But a demo on GKE is probably not gonna cut it in AWS reInvent, right? So what I did was I adapted it for EKS. And I used a project called EKS CubeFed, you know, which takes care of the networking aspects. And, and the theme is, is common across all these different clouds is that once you enable the networking, right, uh, everything else kind of falls into place because, um, you know, Cassandra is just built to be able to kind of, um, you know, build a bigger cluster by just gossiping with, you know, the, the nodes uh, to the other nodes, which are called the seed nodes. And then you can build a big cluster and then Kumbaya, you know, you have, the entire cluster up and running, right? Uh, and then I'll talk about what's next, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, to introduce myself, I'm, um, I go by, uh, uh, I mean, my name is Raghavan Srinivas, no problem here. Uh, most people can uh, pronounce my name, but but I go by Rags, Rags not to riches, easiest way to remember me. Uh, I'm a developer at heart, but I also was a mechanical engineer uh, from UBC Bangalore, a uh, long, long time ago. <laughs> um, I, I'm specialized in distributed uh, systems, uh, but really I love to teach and communicate. Uh, I even teach in the Boston area, uh, which is where I've lived pretty much half my life. Um, and then um, uh, one of my passions is about inner loop, uh, because I think it makes a whole lot of sense. I know in the earlier talk was about Flux, Argo CD, and so on. Uh, that is really more of a robust CI CD kind of loops, but but here what we are talking about is something that is a lightweight inner loop, and I'll talk about that. Actually, next week, uh, there is going to be a talk in uh, Berlin uh, for Open Infra, where I'm talking about uh, Quarkus and how we can use that uh, on, you know, and deploy it on Kubernetes and how we can gain 
uh, a lot of productivity by uh, you know in the end of the loop. All right, moving on. Um, I work for um, you know data stacks as a developer advocate, and we do run workshops every week. Um, pretty much every week, uh, we used to run more than one before. Uh, all of them are free. Feel free to attend them. Uh, they're all virtual. Uh, we get a lot of people from India. We get a lot of people from US. Uh, we get a few people from Africa, every other continent, really. Not many from Australia because the time doesn't work out really well. Uh, but but you know, uh, if you can attend, that'd be great as well. Uh, what is NoSQL? You know, it was just something that somebody came up. Actually, I was in San Francisco in June level 20, uh, 2009. You know, roughly around that time, uh, where we had to come up with some kind of catchy hashtag for something that is not SQL, right? You know, SQL is the traditional relational uh, data model, which which kind of the only way to scale is to by going up and up and up, right? And at some point, it's going to go so big that it's going to fall off, right? I mean, it's not going to work to kind of vertically scale. But instead, what you do is you do commodity hardware and spread your data across and, and by having multiple copies of the data, because you know, disk is very cheap these days, right? Um, you know, I'm gonna give away my age if I say that my first um, you know, PC had 20 megabytes of disk space. Okay, think about that. 20 megabytes of disk space, not even giga, right? And and you know, I was so happy when I moved from the XT to the AT, which went from 20 megabytes to 40 megabytes. So I doubled my disk, disk space, which was like just superb, right? Um, but, but you know, disk is very cheap these days and that's why, you know, it's better to spread your data across and that's exactly what NoSQL does in general. I mean, you know, um, there are other things as well, uh, but, but in general, it's about horizontal scale. It's relational and NoSQL on two ends. One is about, um, you know, scaling up, and really, this is about you know horizontal scaling, which means you have to distribute the data, which means you have to uh, kind of uh, take the data and, and put it on different nodes, right? Uh, and and there is this concept of sharding, and I'll get to it in a second. Okay, but the point here I'm trying to make is that um, you know NoSQL really preceded the cloud, but had a lot of properties that are similar to the cloud, and you will see in my demos and in, in the rest of the talk that how the how kind of all of these come together. You might have heard of the CAP theorem. Uh, basically what this states is that, you know, if you think about consistency, availability and partition tolerance in a distributed system, um, when there is a failure, you know, and, and failure is inherent in a distributed system, right? It, it does happen. Um, you, have, you, you cannot have all these three properties at the same time. It cannot be, consistent, available, and partition tolerant. You have to sacrifice at least one of the three, right? And this is very critical. And, and, and if you think about this, you know, uh, and we can go at length about this, but partition tolerance actually is worse than any of the other, um, or rather sacrificing partition tolerance is worse than sacrificing consistency and sacrificing availability. If it's not available for a few seconds, maybe even a few minutes, it's probably okay. If it's not consistent for a few seconds or a few minutes, it's probably okay because eventually it will become consistent. If it's not on the leaderboard, immediately it's not a big deal, right? You know, it will eventually get there. Uh, but if you lose partition tolerance, uh, then, you know, even my grandmother can make out that, you know, the data is not consistent. Um, a little bit more about uh, Cassandra. What it does is, um, you know, it uses a, um, a ring-like architecture as it's referred to. And, and if you, the oversimplified way of looking at this is that what it does is it takes data, right? You know, it uses something called as a partition key and it hashes the partition key into a particular node, into this node, you know, ring of nodes. Now, what happens when you add, you know, nodes and subtract nodes and all that, right? Uh, the system takes care of all of that. So, so again, the oversimplified view is kind of look at it as like a, a distributed hash, you know, table or whatever you want to call it, right? Except that the platform takes care of all these failures, uh, you know, eliminating hot partitions, um, you know, what happens when, uh, you know, nodes come up and go down and all that, and all of that happens automatically. Um, we take care of the sharding itself. Sharding, it turns out to be very hard. So, you know, leave it up to the platform. Now a lot of lot of um, you know big um, companies uh, use uh, Cassandra. In fact, Cassandra originated in Facebook, and Facebook is still one of the uh, contributors 
to Cassandra. Um, and, and again, you know, what is the big deal about talking about Cassandra, which is already maybe about 13, 14 years old, right? Um, the point is that, you know, I think the, the thing that I keep hearing repeatedly from our customers is that, you know, uh, Cassandra rarely, rarely goes down, if ever, right? Uh, and also the, in terms of scaling, uh, you know, if you, if you look at, you know, like, uh, you know, 100 nodes and 1,000 nodes, you know, your, your um, um, basically your response or latency, throughput or whatever, you know, should l scale linearly. And in many systems, they do until a point, and after that, it kind of levels off. With Cassandra, it keeps on taking, you know, it keeps on going, and it's very linearly scalable, um, you know, without, without too much effort. Now, having said all that, what is Kate Sandra, which is, you know, because we're talking about Kubernetes here, right? Um, can you really run a database on Kubernetes? This was one of the um, um, articles that one of our uh, colleagues right now, Christopher Bradford, uh, who was on the other side, you know, did not work for uh, Datastax at that time, uh, basically wrote, uh, can you really run a database on Kubernetes? Uh, this was about mm, mm, four or five years ago. Um, and, and obviously, a lot of things have evolved. And you will see, you know, today that there is something called as the CAS operator that we rely on. So a lot of things have changed, uh, but today I, um, you know, definitely uh, data and Kubernetes kind of go together. And you can talk about that. Uh, it's not just about stateless apps. It's not just about 12-factor apps, you know, if you remember all that. Uh, but, but you know, um, it is really, um, you know, prime for, uh, <clears throat> you know, putting data on Kubernetes. Uh, one of the cool things about Kubernetes, again, you know, is whether you want to do it on-prem on um, or whether you want to do it on the, you know, different clouds. Uh, I, I think I saw Siebel uh, in the previous session. So really it doesn't matter, right? You know, very, very straightforward. You want to install it on your laptop. You want to install it on-prem. Uh, everything, you know, just pretty much works the same, right? Um, to be able to install Cassandra, we install a number of different components, uh, and, and you can see here that we, uh, you know, have uh, all of these installed with a, you know, something called as a CAS operator. You can see here in the right, um, the CAS operator installs Cassandra, um, we have something called as repair, uh, Medusa for backup and restore, Stargate, which is a unified API developers love because it has REST, it has SQL, it has uh, GraphQL. Um, you know, it's basically a unified API. Uh, we also have, you know, um, if you want to provide ingress, that is traffic. And then there is, of course, Prometheus and Grafana for metrics. So all of these are automatically installed for you. We use leverage Minio, um, you know, so that you can really do it on any of the, uh, um, you know, different clouds. Uh, how do you install it? Very simple. Helm repo, add uh, the repo, and Helm remo update, and Helm install Kate Sandra. Very simple, right? So this is it for a single cluster. Now, what happens in the case of a multi-cluster, right? Um, so we introduced a, a uh, operator called Kate Sandra operator, and we'll see that today. We basically, what happened was we pushed Helm to the limit uh, and then built a new operator called the um, Kate Sandra operator, okay? Uh, and, and if you want to understand a little bit of the rationale of why we did this, uh, you can kind of look at this particular uh, um, article on Newstack. Um, why multi-cluster? Why multi uh, Cassandra has always been designed for multi-region. You know, its partition tolerance is extremely important for us. So even if one of the, you know, the nodes goes down, or maybe a set of nodes goes down, you still should be able to service the request from, um, you know, from the customer, right? Um, nodes automatically route traffic to the nearby neighbors. You know, they use something called as a gossip protocol. And really the theme here is gonna be, once you set up the networking, everything just kind of falls into place, okay? Data is automatically and asynchronously replicated. Uh, and really from a, a Cassandra perspective, the cluster is, um, you know, very homogenous. Kubernetes on the other hand was not designed for multi-region. There were some uh, design decisions that were consciously taken. You know, I recently did a panel on networking uh, for uh, KubeCon and essentially, um, even there, right, you know, there were certain design decisions that, you know, sometimes the designers probably thought, um, you know, are, are right now considering maybe they probably should have had it back, right? They should have done it a little differently. But, but again, the idea there was it's really about 
you know, kind of taking this apps today and and adapting it to the cloud and making it, you know, in such a way that it works on, you know, all the clouds and so on. That's really the goal for Kubernetes. It was really built, you know, it was a platform for building platforms and was not, you know, designed for multi-region. So how do you adapt, you know, Kubernetes uh, to be able to do this for multi-cluster, multi-region, multi-cloud and so on um, is using the what we call as the Kate Sandra operator. The Kate Sandra operator uh, is still in its kind of early days. Uh, it's not completely there yet. You know, uh, for example, we don't have uh, HA available. But essentially, what K uh, Kate Sandra operator does is it's an operator for Kate Sandra and supports multi data center region and Cassandra clusters. Okay, it consists of a control plane and a data plane, and you'll see all that in action in a little bit. Assuming my demo works fine. Um, the control plane can only be installed on a single cluster for now, uh, but you can, you know, uh, double a cluster as both a control plane and a data plane if you want. Um, so how does this work in terms of, you know, the Kubernetes purists, right? Essentially, what you do is you inject the configs of these two clusters, the uh, data plane clusters, into the um, control plane so that the control plane is able to manipulate the data plane. And that's really what, you know, how it works. So what I'll do is I'll, in my demo, I will, I will talk about the evolution where I did this manually in my first demo, which I demoed at uh, AWS reInvent, right? Uh, and then, you know, when I did the same demo in uh, KubeCon EU, um, just a few weeks back, I used the Kate Sandra operator to do the demo. I will show you the evolution um, during the demo, okay? But essentially there is a concept of what is referred to as a Kate Sandra cluster. And here you specify what is the context. You know, remember the Kubernetes context I was talking about, right? One is the East context here and the other is the West context. And basically you can, you can set up each of these data centers. Um, you know, um, I, you will see in my example, I set up these different contexts and each of those will have their own uh, kind of disk provider because you know each of these clouds have different disk providers and all that. And you can tweak all that and then finally install the Kate Sandra um, cluster via the uh, Kate Sandra operator, okay? Um, and this is kind of, it talks about how you can do this, uh, inject the client configs into the, uh, um, you know, into the data, I mean, into the control plane. So you have the data plane and the control plane and you take the um, client configs from the data plane and inject it into the um, um, into the control plane, and thereafter, uh, you know everything is ready to go. So, um, in terms of demos, I wanted to set up set this up a little bit because you know um, otherwise it's going to be a little bit hard to kind of explain the whole thing. Um, like I said, um, the critical part of this multi-cluster with Cassandra is to be able to set up the networking in a way that all of this happens uh, pretty much automatically, right? Um, for uh, GKE, which is where I started, it's pretty straightforward to do that on, on EKS, uh, not so much, right? Uh, luckily for me, what I did was I, I stumbled upon a, upon a project called EKS CubeFed, which is based on CubeFed, but is really for EKS and what it does is it sets up all of this for you. It sets up Bastion host. A Bastion host is the one you can use to jump into these different, uh, um, you know, clusters, right? Uh, and then what it did was, you know, you'll see my uh, installation in a little bit. Uh, you have EU West one uh, on a VPC 172.21.0.0. And then I had a cluster two, which is rags uh, fed 22 at EU central one. You know, this is, I believe in Dublin and this is in Frankfurt. And you'll see both of these in action. Uh, the nice thing about EKS CubeFed is that it sets up all this networking. I'm not a networking guru myself, uh, but once you set this all up, it's very easy to install, um, you know, Cassandra. Because, like I said, what it does is it looks for the neighboring node and kind of builds the cluster uh, and forms a big cluster. So all of this happens automatically. Okay. So with that said, let's see if I can jump to the demo. Uh, this is the multi-cluster with uh, the gate center operator goes into a lot more details of exactly what it does. Like, you know, it has the different contexts that are injected here um, and, and, you know, the different components that can be adjusted and so on. Uh, but let's not worry too much about that. Let's go to the demo. 
and see how it goes. All right. My session has been terminated, so I'm going to try to connect again. This is the KubeFed demo, and basically I'm connecting to the Bastion host. Okay, and uh, let me clear this. And uh, let me go into set up a few stuff. I had this issue before. Let me try it again. All right. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Let me see if I can do it once more. Uh, but but let me sh set, um, let me set this up actually. Um, right. Let me try it once more. Maybe it's already. Okay. Let's try this. Okay. And okay. All right. Let me get rid of this again and let me try once more. Okay, let me go back here and try to connect. I'm just trying to get to the shell that where I've done the demo before. Okay, so one more try. If it doesn't work, I'll move on to the next demo. Okay. So, so you can see here that I'm um, I'm going to show the context. Okay, so you can see here there are two uh, clusters. One is the Fed two one, and the other is the Fed two two two, right? So all that I need to do is kind of look at this, um, which is describe nodes and get the topology, right? And you will see here that this is an EU central one, one uh, B, one A, one C. So uh, Cassandra by itself is rack aware, and but but you know what what I'm doing here is showing a a larger. Uh, cluster. And uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, Cassandra admins, you know that you use a, a uh, um, utility called node tool, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm providing the uh, admin and um, the username and the password. And you will see here that it's basically a big cluster, DC1 and DC2. And you can see here that all of them are up and normal. You know, all of them are up and normal and so on. And if I want to look at, like, for example, um, kubectl get pods minus O wide, right? You will see all these different, you know, like the Reaper, the different components, um, the DC2s, which are in different racks. Uh, and then you will see somewhere here that it's running the CAS operator underneath. Okay, so so um, so that's exactly what is what is going on um, in, in in this particular node. Now, if I uh, use context, and if I go to the other cluster, right, you will see um, if I do the same thing. If I look at the topology, okay, you'll see that this best, right? Um, so so essentially, what this is showing is uh, actually let me do this. Get nodes as a wide. Okay, and this might give us a little bit more um, insight into this. So you can see here it's all 172.21, right? 172.21 uh, and so on. So if I go back to, for example, um, you know, 22, you'll see that those are probably uh, 172.22. So all of this networking aspects and all that are set is set up by EKS. And I really didn't have to do anything. Okay, so this is as far as you know, just EKS is concerned. The next part is what I'm going to show is like a really cool demo of um, uh, I'm using a product called uh, Viviatrix, and essentially what happens here is uh, it it enables the networking, very similar to what happened in EKS, right? What this does is it you know it sets up the multi-cloud, uh, and you can see here. For AKS, it sets up 10.2. Uh, for EKS, it sets up 10.1. And for GKE, it sets up 10.3. It does all the 
you know, the routing, the peering, and all that. Um, so to look at this multi-cloud, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at Lens. Okay, and I've set this up already in the hard bar, right? And this is the AKS AVX cluster, right? And if you look at the pods, you know, you can see here, you know, there are there are different pods here. You can take a look at, you know, what's going on here. Uh, you can take a look at the deployments. And if you dig through this, right, you will see, uh, like, for example, let's look at namespace kit center operator, right? And if you look through this particular operator, you will see that this is set up for, um, I'm trying to figure out where, where it is. Basically, the data plane, you know, is said to be uh, true for this, or the control plane is said to be true for this, and the data plane is said to be uh, false for this, right? Uh, so this is for AKS. Uh, for uh, EKS, you know, if I do the same thing again, you know, if I look at the parts and if I look at the kit uh, operator, okay, you will see that, you know, again, this is 10.1, which is for uh, EKS, okay, and you can see here that the uh, Cassandra control plane is set to be uh, false. So this is one of the data planes, right? So likewise, if I go to the GKE cluster, right, um, same thing, you will see the same thing as well, hopefully, right? Uh, oh, I had to look at the parts. I mean, look at the cage center operator, and you'll see here that, you know, the control plane is false. Uh, and, and essentially, you know, all of this is being managed by the, um, by the cage center operator, okay? So now, if I want to take a look at the unified cluster, right, uh, what I can do is I can do a quick, AVX. You'll see here there are three clusters, right? The AKS, the EKS, and the GKE. And again, I'm going to run the same uh, utility that I ran, okay? Except that here I'm specifying the username and the password, and then I'm going to take a look at the status. Okay, and you'll see here. Yeah. Hey, Rag, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'm almost done. This is the Just trying to check on time, yeah. Yes. This is the EKS and the GKE. And what I've done is installed this through the AKS uh, cluster, which is really, really cool because, you know, all of these are joining together and, and uh, creating one uh, uh, human cluster. Okay, so with that said, let me go back to my presentation and finish up. Um, if you have more uh, questions, uh, you know, uh, feel free to jump on Discord. We have a very uh, active um, discussion on Discord, but you can also go to katesandra.io. Um, you, you, we have our YouTube channel, Data Stacks Devs, uh, all kinds of, uh, um, you know, different workshops, um, you know, preliminary. We even award badges, you know, which are very, very popular. So feel free to, uh, you know, kind of subscribe to the channel, attend the workshops, and, and uh, you have to do some homework. We grade them, and, and you can get some badges uh, as a result. That said, I really want to thank the organizers of KCD Chennai for putting up this event uh, and having me here. Um, um, you know, again, hope to see you all in person, and take care.